Hi, well, I'm just going to talk to you about the Drenning Silverfish Festival that I've been on this weekend. Now, that's down at Whiteacres. Um, interesting, really. I mean, Whiteacres is a long way to go just for one weekend of fishing. Uh, it's 350 miles for me, so it's a long, long way. But I did admire the fact that Drennan had uh, put some money and some investment into uh, back into fishing, uh, like they do all the time, to be honest. Um, and whenever that happens and there's the invites to the event or there's open places for the event, I always like to attend because I think it's great to support companies that like to support match fishing. So I was happy to get in my van and drive down. I went on Friday, did a little bit of a practice, um, went out with uh, Preston Innovations and managed to film for the day. Uh, that'll be out soon on the YouTube channel. Just keep an eye out for that because that's going to talk all about the tactics in detail that I look at when I'm fishing for commercial silverfish, which is something that I really do enjoy, to be honest. Certainly now when it's cold and rainy, I always think you get bites all the time. You've got something to work at. really does keep you busy throughout your session. So something that I'm always looking at anyway. Um, Saturday came. The format of the festival was interesting. One day, F1s counted, as well as all other fish. The other day... All fish but F1s and carp counted. Uh, the, both days carp didn't count, but F1s counted one day, they didn't the other day. Relatively straightforward. Uh, I think that was because there was a split in the lakes and they tried to balance it up. Oh, drop my flow. Balance it up in terms of what they're going to do and what, uh, you know, what fish you're going to target. So, you know, you did have to think about it a little bit and you did have to think, where am I going to target these fish? How am I going to catch a winning weight from here? First day I drew Jenny's 19. Now, um, I always think credit where credit's due to anyone who's uh, given me a bit of information. And I work very closely as a lot of you know with uh, Matt Goffrey. Uh, Matt gave me a, quite a lot of good information about Jenny's because he practiced there on the Sith Friday. So there was a good few little gems he gave me that I felt was going to help me a little bit in my day. Which is always nice. I always recommend that if you get the chance to work with a, with a friend. Put them on one lake, you on another. You get a little bit of information about a couple of different venues. And that's worked really well, to be honest. Drew 19. Um, I fancied it for a few fish. I fancied a young Tom Potter had been on it the day before, pleasure fishing. And he'd caught a few fish. So I did think that there'd be a few to catch. Now, my approach was going to be quite straightforward. Uh, ground bait, dead maggots, pinkies. I really fancied those baits to catch me a few skimmers. Jenny's is full of small skimmers, uh, roach and carassio, things like that. It didn't fish very well at all in the Park D Masters final, but there's been a lot of rain down since then. It's flushed out a lot of that algae that was in there. And as a result, the silverfish were having a bit of a chew. So I set up a line for fishing 13 metres. I used Sony Baits F1 Black. Now, that is by far and away uh, my favourite skimmer ground bait for winter. Um, I just use it all the time and it catches so many fish. I just, I never see the point in changing. If you're using a ground bait that you catch a load of fish on, then keep with it and then, you know, you learn how to use it, when to use it, and it makes a lot more sense. So, uh, that was sort of my first line of thought. My second was the floats I was going to use. <clears throat> with the floats I use, the light isn't great um, on a lot of commercials, to be honest. I think often you get trees and sort of broken light and i think it's always important that you can see a flow but i was very wary of the fact that there wasn't a lot of wind and i did want a fish quite light a lot of these fish are very small very delicate feeders and having a light flow is a massive advantage so i used the uh the f1 maggot which i'm just going to show you here now if i can bring that into the camera okay you can see there the f1 maggot it's part of the uh silverfish range of floats um that we're working on at the moment so definitely uh, one to look out for that uh it's in that is four by ten and there is a four by twelve four by fourteens and bigger but i set up four fourteens four twelves and a four by ten now the reason for the three different floats were four fourteens had a bulk and two droppers my favorite shot in pattern dead simple every rig had an 18 pr 412 Every rig had 08 uh, reflow power line, so you can tell where I'm working out there. All rigs had a solid 5 elastic, and then 414s, 412s, 410s gives me different form and presentation. The 410s, 6 strung out number 11 shot, sort of 4 inch intervals. The 412s, a little bit more positive, that had about 
six, I think, number 10s. Now, I know that doesn't seem like a massive difference, or seven number 10s, but it does make a difference, you know. Uh, sometimes the wing gets up too much. You just you feel like you want a rig still for fishing on the drop, but the four tens is a bit too light. So I just wanted that in case it got windy. And the four fourteens for fishing a little bit more positive, like I said, bulk and two droppers. So the most important thing when you're fishing like that is to really, really dot your float. I'm going to bring this in for you so you can see here. Okay, look, I would dot that really right, right down, an absolute pimple on the... That is so important. All the bites are little dinks. You pick up and there's a fish on and it's really, really nice fishing. Um, I actually fish with a back shot because on these lighter rigs, so it holds it nice and still as well. And that worked quite well, I must admit. A little bit of line on the bottom and I got off to a great start. I caught little skimmers, little roach. I felt I was going to catch a nice weight. I'd heard a lot of people say, look, 15, 20 pounds going to be good. So I thought, well, just keep putting these in the net, working hard. Six metres, 13 metres, another line at 13 metres, a few casters out of my hand. Absolutely loved it. Single maggot, single double pinky, a caster on the caster line for an odd bonus. And I just seemed to put a fish in the net all the time. It was really going nicely. Young Jordan Holloway, man of the moment, was down on uh, the MPEG 15, another flyer. And uh, he was catching Carasio quite well. And I thought, well, they're going to be a pound a piece, so I'm going to have my work cut out to beat him. Then I had a little run of Carasio myself. Three and three chucks. Felt it brought me back in it. Thought I probably had sort of five Carasio by the end of the day. So that was really nice. Um, everything was going really well, to be honest. Um, and I just had a beautiful day's fishing. I never had a dry spell. If I didn't catch, I moved line. I topped up. Little balls of ground bait was good. You could loose feed on a six metre line just to keep fish there. Just working really hard. And by the end of the day, I really one of those days when you walk off the bank, chest out a little bit and you think, I've had a great day. I've really made the most of a peg. You just hope the weighing goes in your favour. Now... Uh, as it happened, it did. I had £40 and 10 ounces. That was enough to win the section. Young Jordan was second uh, with £32, I believe. And there was a £21 as well. So I was really pleased with that. I really had had a nice net of fish. Um, and it put me in a great position because the results were on section points. There had been a big weight of F1s from Mikey Williams on Trelawney. Uh, but elsewhere, I was probably about fourth or fifth in the match across all the lakes. So I felt that was a really nice result. Day two came and I was into Polowin Lake. Now, on Polowin, F1s weren't to count. And I drew peg 20. Now, there's two pegs on Polowin on this point uh, that look back at the what they call the high bank. And it's peg 20 and 19. And they are literally six yards apart so what you need on that is somebody you really like unfortunately for me i had tom scoley so i had to put up with him all day um and we sat there six yards apart and we were going to have a bit of a fishing match now my peg face is sort of to into the main body of the lake if you like or into a bit of a bigger open water area tom's face is towards an island uh probably about 18 19 meters away um nice peg nice peg but uh, I didn't know what was going to be better on the day. To, to be honest, Polowin's not the lake it was anymore. Would like to see uh, um, a few more fish in there, if I'm being perfectly honest. Because all the other lakes are great, but it had been really struggled the day before. All the little, there was little skimmers, didn't seem to be any bigger skimmers. Didn't really seem to be happening, if I'm being perfectly honest. And when I sat down, Lee Klimchuk had been on my peg the day before. It had about 11 or 12 pound, and that was a sort of a dozen perch or so, which I can tell you now, those big perch, once they've been caught, they don't often get caught again, and they're mainly caught down the edges, so it was always going to be hard work for me. Uh, Obviously, with those not perch not really uh, being a viable target, because I felt like they'd fed the day before, I knew that I was going to have to target skimmers and those sorts of other fish. I had a really good match. I was catching, like, nice little skimmers, anything up to, like... Three ounces a pound, that sort of thing. Uh, but unfortunately, um, it, it just didn't seem to be going my way. I was catching an odd F1, which I had to keep putting back. 
And although I felt I was sort of three or four pound in front of, say, Tom and a few others that I could see, I just felt like my peg was going. Every time I hooked an F1, I'd sit and wait for ages without a fish. And it really was starting to concern me. Uh, Tom kept putting decent perch in the net on his long line from his long line and odd, an odd hybrid and bream. And <clears throat> it just seemed like he had an F1 come in twice and he sat without a bite. I'd had... I catch F1s quite regularly and it was really knocking my peg. And to be honest, it was starting to knock my confidence a little bit because I could see Gary Barkley catching an odd barbel on the far side towards the end and I just thought, well, I've got nowhere to go. Every line is either a few little roach, as soon as it goes quiet, you just catch an F1. There wasn't an opportunity to catch a bigger fish because the F1s were just bullying everything out of the way. So it was proving a bit awkward. When the match finished... I knew I hadn't won the section. I'd had £15.10 ounce. Tom had £20.05 ounce and Gary had £19. Uh, so they'd both beaten me. Well done to them. Really, uh, Tom had a lovely net of fish. Seven or eight really nice perch. Probably a couple over a pound and a half. A um, couple of big bream as well. So brilliant performance from him. He loose fed some casters, interestingly, which I thought at the end, maybe I should have tried that. Maybe I should have loose fed a few more casters. But I did it. And with about an hour and 15 minutes to go, I started loose feeding casters. And all I did was the peg just went solid with F1s. They were obviously in the bay where I was. And that was always going to wipe the fish. But that did put me third in my section, which gave me a first and a third. And I snuck in the top 10 in 10th place, which they paid the top 10. So, nice little pick up there for the weekend. I couldn't really complain. Um, apart from, I, <coughs> a section win would have given me enough to win it. Uh, and like being £5 away and feeling like I had the opportunity to do it, but sort of hindered by things outside my control, I did actually find it a little bit difficult to take. Only for about an hour and then I soon got over it. But you know what it's like after a match. It can be annoying when you feel like you had an opportunity to win. And that is what I wanted, really. Um, you had the opportunity, but it didn't happen. But never mind. Uh, really enjoyed the weekend. Brilliant uh, set of prizes from Drennan. Brilliant weekend. Long way to go. Um, the only downside, like I say, was that match like at Pol uh, Polowin was hard. £20. That £20 from Tom was actually top weight on the lake on the second day. It's not the lake that I once knew, so uh, I'd like to see, uh, hopefully something will improve there. But, you know, I'm sure it will, because the rest of the complex is absolutely fantastic, so I'm sure that won't be the case for very long. Anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll catch up with you after this weekend.